Good morning friends. Welcome back to my channel Coding Environment. In today's video, we are going to see what is garbage collection in Java. So in brief, if I have to say what is garbage collection, it is a process which runs in the background in any Java process. The job of this garbage collection is to automatically determine which memory is in use and which are not in use and free up the memory for the further processes. So there are some languages which support this garbage collection and there are some not. So let's see what is the problem we are going to face if the language is not supporting that garbage collection feature. Now there is one language named C which don't support the garbage collection in its programming language. So in C programming language there are some methods called malloc. And there is a method called calloc which is used to allocate some memory into the heap. So you assume this is a heap. So you assume this, this is a heap. Now whenever you call these two methods malloc and calloc, it will allocate some memory into the heap. Now suppose user has called two three times and it has allocated some three memory allocation into the heap. Now after completing its operation, it's the developer job to free up this memory and if we don't free up this memory will be always in use in the heap till the process runs. So to free that memory in C there is a method called free where we have to pass the address. And when the, when the developer calls this free method these three memory allocation will get freed. So he has to basically call three times free here. So this is your developer shop. Now you see here it's the developer job is to allocate the memory and deallocate the memory also. So what are the drawbacks we are going to face when there is no garbage collection supported by the programming language. So the first drawback which we can see is burden on developer. So this is the first problem we are going to see because it's the developer job is to allocate and deallocate the memory right. Now the second problem which we are going to face is dangling pointer. So this is the second problem. So suppose there is a pointer P1 which allocates some memory into the heap. Now what can happen this, this heap memory which we have allocated, you can assume heap 1, this P2 can also reference to the same memory. And now you can see here this pointer 1 and pointer 2 is both pointing to the same memory into the heap. Now what can happen from P2 we can free this memory right so we can pass this p2 here and say free this memory so you see here from p2 we have cleaned this memory from the heap or we have deallocated that memory from the heap but this pointer p1 is still pointing to the same memory in this case what will happen this p1 pointer will become this dangling pointer so this is the problem which we can face in the absence of any uh, garbage collection the third problem which users generally face is double free. In this case, like what can happen, a developer by mistake can call this free two times on the same pointer. So suppose he has allocated from P1 and in this case what can happen, developer can by mistake call two times free on the same memory address. In this case, the behavior is not defined and your program can clearly uh, behave in a very bad manner. The fourth one is memory leakage. So what is this memory leakage? So how a developer can create the memory leakage in the absence of a garbage collection? 
in this case what can happen suppose he has allocated the memory using this using calling this malloc and calloc method and now he forgot to call this free method so in this case this three memory allocation which a developer has done it all will be not freed and this will be present in the or this will be always used by the program and basically it will leads to your memory leakage so you can see here these are the four problems which a developer or which a program can face in the absence of garbage collection so now let's see how a garbage collection feature helps us to overcome these four problems so in the garbage collection as i already told that it is the garbage collection or the gc job to automatically determine which memory is in use and which are not in use and free up those memory for the further users so how a garbage collection works in java so for that we have to know what is the internal architecture of a java so let me uh, give you a pictorial representation how garbage collection works so in java the process memory is divided into some sections so let me uh, give you this pictorial representation in this that first memory is called the eden memory it is called the eden memory e d e n and after that we have something called a uh, survivor memory and this survivor memory is divided into two parts so one is s0 and the second one is s1 and after that we have a memory called tenured memory this is called tenured memory and after this we have something called perm gen memory so this the last one is your perm gen memory now this part of the memory is called young generation and this part of the memory is called old generation so this is your old generation and this is your perm gen so it is already given here it is a perm gen now for the clarification i can write it again so let's see if a developer allocate some memory by calling the new keyword and he is allocating some some class a memory what will happen in this case first so in this case so in this case what will happen this memory this allocation of the memory will first happen into this eden memory or you can say that the memory will get allocated in this eden space this is the young generation objects so as a developer keep on calling this new keyword and keep on allocating some memory it will keep on allocating here now suppose he has called it some five times and it is like on the d he is creating some memory it created a memory here d once this eden space is get filled up your garbage collection algorithm will kick in and it will scan this eden space and it will find it out which memory is not in use and which memory is in use so suppose after doing that operation on a object this a object is not in use so what i can say that this a object is not in use so let's let's mark this a object is not in use now b and d is still in use but a is not in use so once this garbage collection scan this eden space he will figure it out that a is not in use so it will move this b to here and a also it will move from here to here now you see here after first scan of this eden space our objects which are not in use is moved from eden to survivor space so now after this operation 
so now after this operation object b and object d so this is b and this is d is moved to survival space and now suppose again user went and started creating a started creating a new object here suppose it started creating a new object called f and new object of suppose g so it will go and create it here f and g and then keep on doing this so you see here as soon as this gen, uh, garbage collection starts running on the cdn space and it will keep on moving the objects from s0 to uh, eden to s0 and s0 to s1 so after this you can assume that if b is still in use it will move b here and suppose d is not in use it will delete the d here and these f and g it can move here so f can come here and g also can come here so in this way the garbage collection keeps on moving the object from young gen and suppose after some scan this b can move here also so your b can move here again and your if this g and d also can come here so you can assume this g is here and d is also here so all these objects will keep on moving from eden to s0 s0 to s1 and s1 to tenure so you see here this is the young gen where all your new new objects will be stored this is the old gen which survives your scanning of the young gen objects so this is the old generation or old objects and perm gen holds the class metadata class metadata and some description and some description so see here how this memory and and one more thing these things right see this part is your heap area and this part which is perm gen is non heap area non heap area see here also also there also there are some uh, configurations which we can do to configure these values so if you see here this uh, eden space which is this much can be configured with the xms value and this can be configured this whole perm gen can be configured with the xx value so this is all about how your garbage collection works in java so so what are the benefits we are going to get by using this garbage collection so uh, what we are going to get out of it is first no burden on the developer no burden on developer the second thing is almost no memory leakage almost no memory leakage but still developer has to use a The third one is no dangling pointer. All this was the drawbacks of your C language, right? So all these things we have removed, but everything comes with a cost, right? So what is the drawbacks? So first drawback is as the GC is running into the process. it requires the resources right so consumption of resources the second one it makes the
process slow because it uses the resources it makes the process slow so these are the two uh, drawbacks of having a GC and this is the benefit of having a GC to so see how GC helps us to almost uh, come out of this memory leakage problem dangling pointer problem and there is no burden on the developer to free up the memory so it will be done by the garbage collection so there are different types of garbage collection also which can be a topic for the next video so i hope you liked this video if you liked it please subscribe to my channel and stay connected till then have a great day and goodbye